If there's anything that being upset about Haley Williams not responding to my DMs has taught me, it's that there's a fine line between confidence and delusion. Not that I'm delusional, she's just busy. But there are delusional people out there. For instance, fighters or wannabe fighters taking on real fighters. That's when we get to see who's delusional. But hey, the two things aren't too far away from each other. Here, we'll be taking a look at times when fighters and regular people had a bit too much faith in themselves and bit off more than they could chew. Let's get into it. For those who are not familiar, your street fighting record means absolutely nothing when you're in a gym or going against someone who actually trains. It takes about one jiu-jitsu class to be the toughest guy on the block, full of people who took Wii sports boxing too seriously. The challenger, sporting the red gloves, signed the waiver and had every chance in the world to realize he was making a bad decision. Regardless, he gloved up, got in the ring, and as you can see, was taught a pretty harsh lesson in what real fighting feels like. Taken down and having next to no idea what to do when his bar brawl style of fighting didn't work out, the challenger was humbled via takedowns, punches, elbows, and the fact that this was all recorded and posted on the internet. The story here, as I know it, is that the guy in red is a student, and he challenged the coach. I'm assuming he's pretty new because he would otherwise know that a boxing coach is savvy when it comes to throwing hands. And, well, most of us knew what was going to happen here. The coach clowned this student. Untouched and unbothered, the student's punches may as well have come with a two days notice before they were even thrown. The student was hitting air, but not the coach. This is like pugilistic brevity. He just did what he had to do to get the point across. Also, if you got chills, it's because the coach walking off immediately after landing that last shot was as cold as it gets. Fighters come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, from Roy Nelson to Francis Ngannou. We've seen about every build have success in the cage. However, there are common denominators, those being things like more in shape than the average person cardiovascularly, an understanding of martial arts, and the ability to perform. What I'm getting at is, this guy doesn't look like a fighter, and it's because he's not. The shirtless guy in here waddled into the cage and was just waiting for him to see Red to unlock his elite fighting form. What he failed to realize is that seeing Red is fake, and that his tough guy mentality only makes it more pleasurable to watch as he's eating leather and legs. Hopefully, he learned his lesson and is now better for it. How do you think you would have done against this challenger? I don't think it takes a Sean Strickland to beat up guys like this. Bob Sapp is a real fighter, but unfortunately, he maybe did become a bit delusional over time. He's still a very iconic figure nonetheless. However, he did take his fair share of losses. And hey, there's absolutely no shame in losing to a guy named Miracle Krokop. Krokop had a left roundhouse kick that would make dust out of any rib bone placed in its way. With that as context, it's understandable that a fighter would have their arm glued to their body. Sapp's defensive style here left his head wide open, and he was reminded that Krokop is more than just a left kick. A cross lands and not only drops Bob Sapp, but shatters his orbital bone. This one was a bit sad to see. It's hard to watch someone cry or writhe in pain, but especially a big man like this. Shout out to Fight Mixers page for posting this K1 kickboxing footage. When you're a YouTuber like Loaf, you're bound to get into some hot water at times. Yeah, he does antagonize people in order to get content, but he wasn't even really doing anything here. He was filming, and people took offense to it. The truly shocking thing here is that Mickey Mouse didn't even step in and settle things. Like it or not, people have the right to film in public. There's no expectancy to privacy, or something like that. I don't know, I'm an MMA guy, not a law guy. While the YouTuber was arguing with one of the angry guys, another guy came up and cheap-shotted the cameraman. A scuffle then went down off camera. All is well, though. Everyone involved met up again later and made up for it. We love a wholesome ending. We'd just like to shout out to Loaf. Give his channel a shot if you're into chaotic situations like the one we just saw. With a channel name like Trey De Menace, we'd probably be expecting something that wasn't too hectic, right? Kidding. We all know what we're getting ourselves into. 
Though he's obviously looking to exacerbate any confrontation, we can't just blame him for how aggressive these situations get. It's not too hard to just, like, not immediately get super mad about people being dumb in public and having cameras out while doing it. He and another guy just keep yapping at each other and even squaring up a few times. Nothing happened because, of course, nobody here actually wanted to fight. It was just ego versus ego under the guise of Karen versus annoying YouTuber. Now, this is really, really delusional. Charlie Zelenoff started out as a meme, but we can't help but genuinely worry about the guy. He's not as active on the internet nowadays, but when he was, he was infamous for challenging unsuspecting people who aren't fighters to what he would precurse as a light spar. He would then swing with the intent to knock these poor, trusting people out cold. Well, he tried here, and this guy that Charlie challenged just wasn't having it. He put Zelenoff in a headlock and treated it like putting a kid in a timeout. He talked him through how he messed up and made him feel ridiculous. Well, this one was a circus. This is Charlie, the guy from the last clip. He actually had what halfway looks like a sanctioned boxing bout. And, well, he lost it to a guy that, no offense, doesn't look like the best boxer. That's only corroborated when looking into his record of 2-28. and 28. But when we needed him to win most, he did it. He has a win over Charlie Zelenoff on his record, and for that, I think he deserves a six-figure payday. A key to the city, a trophy in the park, maybe a spot in any Hall of Fame ever created. What do you think about Charlie Zelenoff? Sound off below. Now, this is Charlie against someone who can actually box really well. The guy that Charlie's fighting here is just 16, but has 16 times the skill that Zelenoff brings to the table. Charlie has this thing where he lacks fundamentals. It's what a lot of people in the boxing universe call being bad at boxing. Every time he jabs, he leans in, but flares his right hand out when it should be glued to his chin. So the 16-year-old started capitalizing and countering Charlie's jab with a lead hook. This had Zelenoff perplexed, and probably wondering how much easier other hobbies would be, like doing puzzles or collecting shoes. Instead, he's collecting damage to his nose, eyes, and jaw. The kid's lead hook doesn't miss, and it's from A to B so fast. When things aren't going his way, Zelenov just, you know, leaves. He seriously just dips from the ring. Whatever delusion he's living in is a very strong one, because he'll hop out of the ropes and still call himself undefeated. A lot of the delusion in the combat sports world comes from people who do train, but they put their trust in martial arts that are more for the aesthetic than for practicality. If you can spot the difference between a Hollywood flick fight and an MMA fight, then you'll know what martial arts work in the real world and which ones work to make stunt actors look cool. Wing Chun has some cool things about it, but it doesn't crack the top 10 martial arts someone should learn to become a fighter. Here, a Wing Chun practitioner is taking on a boxer who hurt his hand, so he's only using one arm. And yeah, it goes as you would expect if you know much about fighting. The boxer knows a bit more than boxing. He's checking kicks, which probably sunk the Wing Chun fighter's confidence immediately. A boxer who knows to defend their legs is a scary opponent. The boxer moves well and drops his opponent with a cross to the chest. What can we see here? What we can see here is that the Wing Chun guy probably doesn't spar much, and certainly not against anyone with a great base martial art. You can tell by the way that his technique dwindles by the second and he goes into survival mode, whereas the boxer stays true to his form and keeps the fighting clean. This fight did see the end of the round. From other videos, we can tell that Wing Chun is a protected martial art in China, so they more than likely stop the fight to call it a draw in between rounds. Are you liking the content so far? If so, drop us a line on this video, because why not? Fine, you can subscribe too, we'll be okay with that. Let us know you're liking the video, and let us know what you'd like to see next. We love the engagement. I told myself I wasn't going to spend this entire video bullying martial arts that don't really work. But here I am following down that rabbit hole. Tai Chi is more of a therapeutic exercise rather than a skill you'd like to know when being confronted by someone trying to steal your shoes, your girl, and or your car, shoes, and girl. 
Zhu Xiaodong is a fighter who made his goal to debunk fake martial arts. He did so and really stuck to his guns, leading to a lot of problems for himself. But he did what's for the best. As we see here, and as the channel Master Wong broke it down, Tai Chi is not for self-defense, but it sometimes advertises such. That's just asking for trouble. This martial art held up about 10 seconds against a professional MMA fighter. So yeah, more of an aesthetic martial arts taking on real, tried and true forms of fighting. This guy's allegedly a Wing Chun hobbyist, and he wanted to try things out against a fighter. We all know how this one is going down. The Wing Chun guy utilized this really neat defensive style in which he used no head movements and kept his hands down so he could effectively block these punches with his chin. He did so very well. If the goal was a nap, then mission accomplished. Bar Kevin Holland, I'm not aware of legit MMA fighters that claim Kung Fu. Of course, I'm sure a lot of fighters have dabbled, but not many wear it on their sleeve above a BJJ black belt or kickboxing accolades. In this clip, we see what seems to be an MMA fighter taking on a Kung Fu practitioner. Not to be overly critical, but the MMA fighter doesn't seem too well skilled. Regardless, the MMA fighter knew more than the Kung Fu guy. He landed a few kicks before taking him down and knocking the challenger out with strikes from the mount position. Overall, not a great performance, but enough to show that a little MMA skill will trump a decent amount of Kung Fu skill. This is likely the best display of Wing Chun in this video but also one of the better displays of actual fighting as well. This Wing Chun practitioner got in there with a skilled and patient kickboxer. The Wing Chun guy did okay keeping true to his martial art as opposed to getting sloppy, but the leg kicks started eating away at him. When someone doesn't know how to check a kick, they oftentimes start reaching down to block with their hands. At that point, pretty much checkmate. The kickboxer had the Wing Chun fighter thinking low, but the next kick went high. Wing Chun guy zigged when he should have zagged and boom! A kick to the dome shuts the lights out and further separates Wing Chun from the genre of practical martial arts. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I know that Bradley Martin is in part playing a character, but to say that this guy isn't somewhat delusional is delusion in and of itself. Martin is seen here training with a judo and jujitsu practitioner. Those 260 pounds aren't stopping him from getting manhandled, and his max on bench press isn't saving him from this guy's sharp technique. Bradley's tossed around like a child, and the practitioner seems to be only going about 10%. You'd love to see it. This is a humbling experience. Now that Bradley knows what technique feels like, it's unlikely we'll actually see him going against any of the professional fighters he's calling out. Now that is a bummer. Who'd you like to see Bradley Martin go up against if you could pick? Sean Strickland, anybody? Have you ever gone to a sports bar when MMA was on? There's almost always a guy about four beers deep saying he could take a fighter, especially when it's a female fighter. Well, that's not the case. Good technique will bridge a gender gap any day of the week. Take it from me, a young, decently athletic guy that's been choked out by a smaller 50-year-old woman who I quickly learned is a black belt in jiu-jitsu. The guy here thought he'd be able to take a trained woman. Kudos for trying, but nope. You can't really use athleticism to work out of an armbar, and formally being on the football team won't teach you what you need to know about escaping chokes. On a similar note, we've got a bodybuilder trying his luck against a professor at a jiu-jitsu gym. Rambo Cuz the Guns posted this video and he's the bodybuilder that gets smoked here. So this is more playful than it seems at first glance. So hey, thanks for posting the footage. Check out his channel to see more. But yeah, we know how this story goes. Despite being strong enough to lift a house, this guy is tossed around and slapped for stepping out of line. Truly a pleasure to watch. You know the saying, play stupid games, win stupid prizes? Well, emphasis on the stupid when it comes to this guy. There's a whole lot of backstory here, and you can get that by checking out the full video on UFC fighter Natan Levy's YouTube channel. But what you need to know is that this stupid challenger 
stepped in to defend a stupid person that Natan Levy called stupid. Said stupid challenger actually showed up to the gym and was taken care of. Did you follow that? The thing that really stuck out, though, was the challenger actually thought he stood a chance here. He thought his size in free trial classes in Taekwondo would help him in beating the 8-1 and one Natan Levy. Nope, not even close. We're going to wrap this video up by giving Bob Sapp a bit more airtime. Whether it's delusion, just wanting a paycheck, or if he really was taking dives for any reason, we don't fully know. But it was incredible that he was still given these big fights and having faith put in him when he lost so often and almost always in the same way by going down before he was truly out. Alexander Emelianenko, brother of Fyodor, was able to put Bob Sapp away in a way that became very familiar to fans who watched when Bob Sapp was an active fighter. That does it for this video. How'd you like the content? Let us know down below. Be sure to like the video and share it. It really helps the channel out. What do you guys want to see next? Let us know. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss a future upload. We'll catch you next time.